back to Flint Creek Transport. My name is Justin, still here in Boise, still doing the tour of Western Trailer. It's been an awesome tour. I apologize, uh, things might not be in perfect order, but there's a lot to see. A very interesting tour, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. All right, so here we're at the main plant. Clint's gonna take us through this plant. Anything you wanna say about this plant? This is the main manufacturing. Everything that gets shipped all over the United States or North America is manufactured here. Get kind of a view of the whole expanse of it. So we run three lines. We run a flatbed line, and then we have two sheet and post lines. One's dedicated to express trailers. The other one does garbage, wood chip, agriculture trailers. So we'll go walk through those different lines. So would our trailer be in here? Your trailer has already came out and it's over going into another building. Okay. All those parts that were getting plasmaed out at the other shop come over here and we deburr them in these machines right here. So we're getting rid of some of that mill scale and getting rid of the sharp edges so our guys don't cut themselves. Yeah. And that Flat steel has mill scale, so it's smooth as glass. So we're trying to get rid of that. Some of these parts may end up tucked in a cross member, you know, somewhere where we can't blast it with grit. So we're just trying to make the paint stick better in the long haul. Good, that's, are, that's important for us guys in New York. It is. And these, these are just essentially big sanders. And they're okay. getting rid of that mill scale. So we run it through one, flip it over, run it through the next machine and we do both sides of every single piece on the western trail. Wow. So all these pieces just start magically appearing into the different locations and they need to go. They'll, they get put on these carts with routing numbers and so then they'll either go to forming or to welding. And so they're just getting distributed throughout the plant and, and little processes are happening to them before they end up back over on the line. This is the plant manager. Hi. How you doing? Justin Sensenick, Flick Creek Transport. Ethan's a great help. He's been here a long time, started as a welder, and has worked his way up into management. Um, he goes around a lot of the schools with me, too. Okay, and, nice. Uh, we've been doing a great job just inserting ourselves into these local schools. That's awesome. We need a few welders from there now. We'll go down the flatbed line. I'll kind of show you how flatbeds are made. Express line, garbage trailer. We make our own beams for our flatbeds and we can engineer the strength of these beams. That's the big welder down there. Yeah, let's go see if we can comes see Comes right it. down. down this is almost like a truck lift except yeah but it, it just rotates. rotates yeah we pick it up and we rotate it so we can weld on the flat that way you're getting a premium weld from here then they'll go to paint to blast and then paint so we grit blast everything prior to any paint yeah so this one's ready to go yep feel this because you'll want to feel this later feel how smooth that is Yep. We have to blast that to get that smoothness off. Gotcha. So that's the flatbed line. We're going to go over to, which line are we going to next? We're going to post and panel. Post and panel. So this would do, include walking floors, tippers, tippers, belt trailers. So this is where our belt trailer would have started? Yep. Yeah, it would have started as a subframe like this. The upper coupler would have came in from another shop. And we're right between moving the line. So we're actually, we don't even have a trailer in this starter either one of them. We just move them forward. But they start right here. We're building the subframe, we put the axles on, and then they'll fly those right underneath the rest of the shack. But we can see a belt trailer over here, a walking floor, one of them. It's just like this. The roof frame would have went on. We're the only trailer with the full frame. We flew the subframe underneath it and attached it in the upper coupler. This one's ready to go out to paint and blast. Oh yeah. yeah slick that in. Yep. We want your paint to stick, so we're gonna yep. blast it. Yeah, blast that. We're the only manufacturer that's got a full frame front to rear. That's what gives the trailer good strength. Your motors attach onto here. Shaft goes in here. Motor on this side. Hydraulic. This one's gonna be a top hinge door. Got oh yeah. See the hinges up there, so there's a top hinge door. Just pushes out the back. Drill presses, we still use some drill presses. Some saws, 
but they're cutting parts just like our plasma and they're putting them in kits with aluminum. And everything's put on carts so it can magically go around the plant. Gag the punches so we can punch any, put a program in and we can punch any hole pattern with them. Cool. So this one does sheets, that one does posts. Because we're rivet, sheet and post construction. Yep. And this one will also do posts as well. These two tables are high-speed routers, so we don't plaz out our aluminum, we route out our aluminum, that way we don't ruin the integrity of the edges, you know. Makes, well, like heat makes aluminum yep. weaker. He's fastening this big sheet down for some reason. We don't have to fasten material down on these tables though because it vacuums it. Then we cover all the aluminum with the plastic sheeting so we don't scratch it. So now we're heading over to the blast booth. You kind of see the uh, raw production, this first part. And you can see that more of the finished trailers over in there where they're getting wrapped up, but we'll come back to them. We're gonna go check out the blast booth. So this is our grit blast booth. Anything steel components gets blasted because we want the paint to stay a rock chip. If it's a rock chip, it stays a rock chip if it's blasted, painted. And so we blast anything before any aluminum's on the trailer, we blast all the steel. Get rid of that mill scale, which is smooth as glass. So two guys in fresh air suits come in here and just start blasting with grit. And we use steel grit versus sand because it lasts about 10 times longer. Got a couple trailer parts in here. Ag walking floor subframe and That's the upper coupler, right? Yep. So it leaves the blast booth. On uh, here's some finished product. We can see what it's like after it's blasted. So after the blast booth, we bring them over in here. We rinse them off with a phosphate wash, and then they blow dry it before it goes into paint. Yeah, it's a little textured. these infrared lights it actually cures it from the inside out we're heating up the steel so normally if we pull a trailer out the paint just gets a hard shell on the outside and everything's still wet underneath this way we're actually curing it from the inside out so that was our paint booth in there we do electrostatic painting so the gun has a turbine in it that produces a positive charge we ground out the trailer negatively and then when we're painting it's sucking the overspray out of the back side of that part so when we go and hit the back side it's actually a second coat and we're saving about a gallon of paint per trailer has the process changed at all in the last several years like does your paint uh last longer or like for us we're in upstate new york yeah we get a lot of salt corrosion has there anything you know you guys done in the last several years yeah, that changed that 2012 we we spent a million bucks on the blast booth that brought us up another tier you know so we're prepping the steel prior to paint the electrostatic painting and then the infrared lights to bake it on that whole process has helped our paint immensely now a rock chip stays a rock chip and because they're just coming up with better brines to put on the road it's eating everything alive aluminum and steel and so if you look at the levels there's like five things you can do for painting automobile process uses about four and since we have the blast booth we're actually one tier above that yep. so we're prepping the steel in a different way than automobiles are wow. so we're trying to make it in here as best we can so i have i have some 2019 kenworth trucks that we bought back in june of 18 so they had two winners and they're already showing quite a bit of rust around the pumpkin yep. and is that the steel or is that just the paint process i think the paint process rock chip gets started and you know the brine on the road it just starts attacking it and if it can get under the paint it'll lift the paint it's, we're doing all we can in the manufacturing world but it, it's a battle out there yeah. it's a battle on wiring it's a battle on steel it's a battle on aluminum now because the mag chlorides well i go back to our 1989 trucks the paint seems to last or stay on the frame a whole lot better well, is that because of the paint the paint used to have stuff that was bad for the environment yeah. that made it stick and they took all that out yeah because so. whatever paint that was 
That was some pretty good paint. Yeah, yeah that I was mean. good paint. <laughs> we like that paint too. Yeah. We actually mix the paint right here, just like they would at Home Depot or any others. We put in a code, mix this right here before it goes to the gun. We have a boom room out there. So they just, our painters come in and say, I want to paint blue today. And we'll paint any color. It doesn't matter to us. We match truck colors. We'll paint any color where a lot of people won't. And all that mixing's done right here. And so we only have to clean from here, the lines to the gun. No more pressure pots. No wasted paint. Wow, that's cool. This is the finished product. Oh yeah, painted chassis. I love to come out here and see the metallics. Chip trailer, flatbeds, belt trailer. This is our other business, CJ Precision Machine. We make a lot of our own trailer parts here, but we also sell to the semiconductor industry, power sports industries. It doesn't matter to us if it's a drawing, we machine it. Um, we're known for our precision machining in here, so we made 50 artificial ankles last month. Wow. You know, I mean, we make little tiny semiconductor machine parts in here too. A lot of gun parts too. Nice. Mass load this up. It's got multiple vices we clip into here. This raw chunk of steel is going to end up to be this, which is a gas block for an AR-15. There's a lot of manufacturers in Idaho, so we have a lot of gun manufacturers. And so that that is going to be that. That's really cool. Isn't that neat? You yeah. make your own AR-15, huh? We don't, but <laughs> we make a lot of parts for people that do, yeah. for other manufacturers. So this one we can load up multiple parts and it can run lights out. It'll hold 200 tools, I believe. You get her set up and just walk away. Walk away, yep. Our uh, other mills in here, three and four axis mills. Um, we've got a full five axis over here. Andrew, is your five axis turned on or is it off? It's off right now, oh, okay. unfortunately. If I would have known you guys were coming, I would have turned it on. I know, I should have popped it apart, but you can see some of the stuff he's made right here. You know, just the variety. None of these are trailer parts either. These are just things people have sent us to make out of billet. This one was the, um, a, a mold to make a coupler for a 747 sewer pipe. That's crazy. <laughs> you, wow. We don't care what they are as yeah. long as they're just drawings to us. This there is, is the hot loaded. rod of the machining world now. The difference between this five axis and like the five axis we have over there, those can do one function at any axis. This one can do all axes at once. So it can like fluidly move all of its axes and machine it. It's like over the top to watch. It's, wow. It's amazing. It's pretty cool. So this is kind of what a traditional lathe looks like. Everybody kind of has that idea. This is a lathe right here and this is the way that America was made on these but they've taken them to a new level these are what the new lathes look like so this one has live tooling this one's about seven axis lathe so like it's got drill bits and different things over here this is all the live tooling oh wow that whole head has got tools the whole yeah, way around like it tour it and so it can actually grab the piece from over here and then these also have bar feeders so they'll feed their own rod in and grab it pull it over to the other side It'll work on it, it'll cut it off, and then it'll work it over here, and it'll drop a part in the tray, and we can pick them up tomorrow. <laughs> I know. That's pretty cool. Isn't that crazy? Rather than yeah. someone sitting there with a, you know, a blade and, like, chiseling off machinery, these have the live tooling. All the tooling on that. They're just unreal. These two machines can run lights out also. So we can load them up with rods. I'd hate to learn how to run this machine. We make our own light castings, and I'll show you how we make those. We make gearboxes, ratchets for curtains, um, different handles and levers. We make all that stuff over here in this machine shop and, and send it over to Western Trailer. You know, the wall of weird little parts, widgets. All kinds of cool stuff that you guys have made out there. Yeah, out of different materials. We do a lot of handlebar risers, Harley Davidson parts. We need to organize this shelf. Everybody's got a shelf like this, but we do anodizing, not on site, but a lot of orders will request that because certain aluminums, the people we sell to, they don't want it to react to certain gases or something, so they'll request a special coating. 
and we can arrange all that. These are our own light housing for okay. our semi trailers. Yeah, those look familiar. They're on our trailer. Wall of parts. Yeah. Right. This is building 10. We do a lot of sub assemblies here. All those little trailer parts that have been formed. We weld them into bigger parts. And so like your upper couplers, your rear frames, all that's made right here in these welding. Our shafts are preheated. Normally Don's over there welding one, but we heat them up to 500 degrees before we weld the sprockets on so you're not gonna have failures down the road. But this is just where we finish hydraulics. Okay. So those three bays are plumbed with hydraulics. So we let the trailer do the work and put its belt in itself. Look at all these axles. Our aluminum welding area, we keep it separate from the steel. Just a different environment. It's so all we, aluminum here. We build all of our own ladders. We love to showcase our welds. You'll see a lot of pretty welds in here. Oh wow, look at that. These guys are real craftsmen. They do a beautiful job, beautiful welds. Got the hoppers, the hopper yep. attachment. Yeah, that's for about here. Hi guys. There's a rear door. We're an express trailer. This is where we make the light ca the light castings for our trailer, semi trailer. Let me work show you what they start. See the light castings? Start as an extrusion. That's where it starts. Precision saw it. Kind of ugly though. Steak pockets too. We machine them out and thread them. Kind of dull raw aluminum. So we take it a step further. Polish them. visible from you know your mirrors and it's got that I don't know there's some rating on it it's a neat light long life light and we offer it in amber um, red and now we're going to be able to turn the rear two corner lights into turns also okay which nice. is going to be cool yeah and then if you use them in the header we can make them stop or turn also okay so that's just new features because we got a new light with three three wires so we can add a another function versus just marker. Cool. Two sheet and post lines. One's dedicated to express trailers and then one devoted to flatbeds. And this is the start. Painted chassis are gonna go back in the plant, get plumbing and wiring, sidewalls, front rear walls, tarps, yep. etc. So our the first spot we were in, all the parts getting put on, yep. then over to the sandblast and paint, and yep. then they come back around come back in the other the side. Yep, and those kits they were making at the warehouse show up at this first door so they have everything they need to put on the trailer is delivered and you can see that kits over here oh yeah look at the kits in here plumbing and that'll sticking happen for that trailer a couple more times tonight because we're open 20 hours a day four days a week we give everybody three day weekends wow yeah that's nice we're we prep them right here we make hopper bins also right here there's steel in there there's steel in here, aluminum, aluminum bottom. I see. So Keith sends you this part. Yep. They're pretty standard, but we have a few tweaks that fit our yep. trailer. Different. So I showed you in one of the previous videos what a walking floor is and what it does. This is the drive unit. You can see the cylinders in there. They got cardboard over there on the on the cylinder part. But Every these are one the... of these is hooked to one third of the slats. Yep. So this is a four axle chip trailer. Yep. So everything these guys need to do to perform their work supplies them in this work. All their tools, all their fasteners. We supply it right when the trailer hits there. They have everything they need. They're going to move it forward this way. The plumbing's been done, the walls have been hung. Um, it's gonna go to the next station, next chassis comes in. We'll hang the walls on, front wall. Start plumbing and wiring. So this is for the next trailer that's coming in. Yep, yeah, you got the walls pre-built for the next trailer so we can fly the whole wall onto the trailer. So this thing will basically We'll pick it up with a crane and we'll hang it on the, on the 
Wow. Both walls done. All these rivets have been pressed to an exact measurement. So we have a good fastening of the machine in the post. It's gonna have long life. The other nice thing about these, this trailer is repairable for life. Mm -hmm. You can drill out these rivets, change the panels, put new ones on, change the posts. Just keep rebuilding like the trailers. We're down the air and electrical above our heads. Yep. You know, so our guys aren't running around on creepers. We space this out so it's easy to clean. Mud can fall out. It's kind of nice. Another step of the process, they're doing plumbing and wiring. Third stage, it gets a little more finished. Fourth stage, it's done till it gets the hydraulics done. You need to get yourself a set of gray lifts. Gray ones? Gray. Uh, gray manufacturing, I think it is. These have been a lifesaver. Yeah, they're awesome. nice. Ours are this basically like that. It's just they're not corded. Oh, they're wireless. They're wireless. Yep. All of them. We got them Pretty on every cool. line now. It's just handy. Yep. It's got white LEDs. Nice. This one's got removable bows. Oh yeah. Yeah, and I think our trailer we have ordered with heavier bows, the big bows. Yeah. That way the loaders don't ding them. We had a few of these smaller ones, but they just get bent they so get fast. Beat up, yeah. yeah. It's funny, out in the West Coast, nobody buys bows. Uh, they just have one steel load shedder in the middle. That's what we call it. That's it. But we uh, don't get do the they, rain like that. Yeah, you know? See, that's our problem. We get a lot of rain. And then, uh, so what, do they run a, a steel pipe in their tarp? No, we just don't. It's just kind of, we deal with it. If it gets a little bit of water, yeah. we drive faster. Blow it off. Blow it out, yeah. Aluminum landing gear. Did you guys go aluminum landing gear? Well, I don't think we did. Well, now you know, next one. Aluminum landing gear, aluminum braces. And if I'm correct, it's been a while since I've been selling, but I think for an extra couple hundred, you can get a 10 year leg. You only have to grease it once every five years. Oh, wow. Is this Ghost. Jost? Yep. Okay. Yeah. This is the flatbed line. Fleets we sell to, steel wheels, three bar winches. You can use D-ring straps or show loops on these hooks. Okay. Got the steps on there. Unload plug. It's little things too, like see how these stake pockets and machines smooth? Oh yeah. And then down here. Feel that nice and smooth. Wow, that is nice. So a lot of people are just cut off. Yeah. We take that extra step to machine it out, make it yep. smooth, safe for the driver. It's not going to cut himself. Even the trailers we take to the, the trade shows, everything always is nice and tied up, clean. We go to a center junction box on all of our trailers. We go back and look at that. That way it gives you a place to test your wiring. Yep. So please, practice socializing. It's just a standard. You can always see how clean it is. So I mean, I could take this trailer to Mid America. I could trust that the wiring's gonna look good when you crawl underneath. Yep. And we try and make them all look like that. Oh, that's really cool. So our Western belt has that as well. Yep. We got a junction box. Thanks. So we picked a different rear harness than front harness just because of testing. We found that the certain one we use at the rear gives us more life than if we use the same all the way through. We use a different front one. We just like this. It gives, gives guy, repair guys some way to diagnose and check the trailer. And a lot of places aren't doing that anymore. You know, they're saying you get 10 year warranty on your lights and wiring. Yeah. You know, I mean, but if it fails, you got to tear it all off. Yeah. Where do you start? You know? Yep. So probably another stock trailer, steel wheels. Yep. Fleet trailer. Fleet trailer. Yeah. One of our customers. Look at these pockets. See how that top edge and oh, bottom yeah. edge. Got that nice. smooth off. Real nice. These just come back in, get touched up a little bit, yep. and then they're good to go. Look at that. Yeah, this is a beautiful flatbed. Toolboxes, done a drag, lift kit on the front. Yeah, that's a beauty. Yeah. 
So there's a big curtain van. So the super van is very similar to that. Yeah, so they're all super vans. The ones that haul chips are open tops because they have a tarp top. These yeah. are hard tops. So that's a hard, hard top. top. Guys, not to confuse you, but the super vans still have a tarp side. Yeah. The chips will go they're, in the trailer. They're a uh, load gets, bearing curtain. They've got four inch straps welded inside the load bearing curtain super vans or yeah. super van open tops. These are a lighter duty curtain. They slide to open. The super van open top rolls up. Okay. So when you're hauling lumber, you roll it up, load the lumber, roll it down. Yep. Or you can, when it's all secured, you can top load wood chips. Yep. Right against that curtain. Yep. That's yeah. impressive. We're going to go through parts and service right now. I'll show you the entrance here. It's pretty cool. Clint, you want to tell them about the entrance? Yeah, so all of our buildings have these awnings, and these are just replicas of our outside frame flatbeds. Uh, we still build these. So Brandy's kind of made this neat display of different things that some of our ag traders haul. This is really pretty. Okay. So yeah, if you want to see what goes in a belt trailer. So this is our service shop. So uh, rack repairs, trader maintenance. We've got a full frame rack, the largest in the whole Western United States. We can literally pick a trader up and twist it back into shape which is pretty neat. Nice. Um, not just Western traders, uh, we'll work on just anything. I mean, they've had RVs in here. We do a lot of trader stretching, shortening, replacing axles. Nice. We, new trailers that people want to add lights. This monster's neat. Some days you'll come in here and see a flatbed trailer completely picked up off the ground and twist it back into shape. Wow. Um, straight truck frame. So this thing lifts it up, twists it. Yep, using porta powers and, and winches. Neat thing about West. So is, are trade. those tie downs or? Yeah, we have railroad tracks in the floor so we can tie that trailer down and start pushing and pulling yep. and straightening it. Straightening frame. See the tie down? Newer end on this trailer. And I see that one. Top Something. Got torn. Yeah. They're gonna put a new top on it. New tarp on this one. And we also have two drive-through bays where we do fleet maintenance. So we're changing oil. We'll do anything external on the motor. We don't dive into the motor. So. Check out the uh, crane up there. And there's one on both sides. Here's the one over here. And they'll go from one end of the shop over to the other. Get all your parts in here. So they just enter the code of what part they want into right here? Yeah, shelf location. So we can go back to one. Different, different shelves, shop supplies, grody, pigtails. So we don't have to take up so much shelf space. Pretty cool. Long. So this is the aftermarket parts. We supply our Washington and Oregon locations with parts next day. Um, we ship anywhere in the USA out of here. Um, we don't just carry Western trailer parts. Um, we're really price competitive, brake drums, fifth wheels, spring parts, airbags, we got it all. The colors of the shelves are Boise State Broncos. Okay. And they have one little default shelf over there because our UPS guy is an Oregon fan. Oh. <laughs> so they have an orange and green one. There you go. Wow. Yeah, look at all the parts. I want to show you here inside Western's sales office. They have a lot of art all over the place and it's pictures of trucks and trailers, uh, basically Western trailers. Look at this trailer frame. And it's so awesome. They manufacture a lot of that themselves. <laughs> around October I ordered our trailer and I basically the process of ordering the trailer is I talked to the sales rep Jason Hilton he's in Pennsylvania and I can put his uh, contact information in the description place the order with him 
you tell them what you want and they send you the paperwork and you can cross out uh, or type in or put in you know what you want or changes things like that the process to build trailers they're actually quite busy what is the lead time for a so trailer build? we're probably over nine months right now and are most of the trailers that you that are ordered are they custom trailers everything's or? custom but we have certain models that we steer people to and then we customize from there yeah and I know we purchased a stock trailer from you guys from one of your dealers we kind of needed one last minute and that worked out really well you guys I mean they do have inventory at some of the dealers at different locations and I think the furthest one east would be what mm -hmm. Illinois Pennsylvania Pennsylvania yep okay yeah not dealers direct factor direct or salesmen and they got yards yeah yeah cool all right guys our trailer is somewhere in this lineup standing right in front of it actually this is it So you can see the belt is not in yet. You gotta put the belt in. This is, yeah, beautiful trailer. So we put five lights top and bottom, or five lights on the bottom, five on the top. Here's what the inside looks like without a belt. You can see the bows that we went with. Typically in a belt trailer, they would not have all those big bows. Like this one would be like our old one. It would have uh, just one bow in the center. We put in these uh, big bows because the trouble we were having just payloaders hitting the small bows and even some of the product, heavy material uh, coming down, hitting and breaking the bows. So you can see those bows in there are much heavier. Hopefully they don't get hit, and if they do, they can at least handle a little ding or whatever. So we're excited to get this trailer back in and get it running. We got the work lights back up in there. And that's the really cool thing with Western Trailer is you can pretty much order the trailer however you want it. There's so many different options. Put in the paperwork, let them know what you want, and they will send you a quote for it. So this trailer is gonna be needing a ride east. So when we get this trailer back, I'll definitely shoot some video on it and how it works when it unloads, things like that. Guys, I'm about to leave Western Trailer and I wanna give a hearty thank you to Clint. Uh, Clint's here with us for taking us on this tour. And Clint, anything you wanna say? Hey, uh, get a hold of us, come buy a trailer. We got great products. Yeah. Western is an awesome company. They work with a lot of schools and bringing uh, new hires in. They have a lot of people retire from working here. It's a great organization and it's awesome to do business with people like this. It's a family business, so it's a lot of fun. Thanks a lot, Clint, for, uh, for that tour. Take one good look at the mountains yet. Got my bags. We're headed out. Uh, they're going to drop me off at the airport.